Scootily doodly do, it's time for another Welsh review. Scootily doodly do do. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Welch Review. Today, we are talking about Freaky. Um, so, yeah, we'll get, get Freaky. What's going on? All right, so in Freaky, you have Vince Vaughn, and you know him. He's been around forever. He crashes weddings. He goes to internships. He's worked with dinosaurs in the Lost World. That's right. He's also, he does have some background in horror. He was Norman Bates in uh, Gus Van Sant's uh, Shot for Shot remake of Psycho. Um, you also have Catherine Newton, who uh, recently was in Detective Pikachu and uh, the film Blockers as Millie. Um, Vince Vaughn, sorry, plays the butcher guys. Uh, and yeah. then you have Celeste O'Connor as Nyla Chonitz. And she's going to be uh, in Ghostbusters Afterlife, which I think comes out this year. Um, Misha Oshirovich as Josh Detmer. He was in Nose for R2. Mm-hmm. Uh, Emily Holder as Sandra, Nicholas Stargell as Isaac, Kelly Lamar Wilson as Ginny, Mitchell Hoog as Evan, <laughs> Hoog, Hoog, uh, Dana uh, Dr- Drory, or Drony as Charlene Kessler, uh, Katie Finnerman as Coral Kessler, she was in the TV show Bloodline on Netflix, um, she played Kyle Chandler's wife, um, Mrs. Rayburn. Mm-hmm. And then you have Alonzo Ward as Mr. Daniels, Dustin Lewis as Ginny's dad, Jennifer Pierce Mathos as Ginny's mom, uh, Uriah Shelton as Booker Strode, Melissa Colazzo as Ryler, which is the stupidest name I've ever heard, uh, Alan Ruck, man, from Ferris Bueller, Cameron, right, uh, as Mr. Bernardi. Right? And he just plays a huge tool in this. Yeah. Uh, which is appropriate because he's the shop teacher. Yeah. Uh, but anyway. uh, it's a tool you see? joke. And then you use tools in shop <laughs> class to make things. Thank you, Sam. Yeah. Uh, you got a a, a, uh, a triple, triple feature of assholes as Tim Johnson, Carter W. Glade, and Ezra Sexton. They play a bunch of high school jerks. Yeah. Um... And then you have Maria Sager as Senora Cayanis. Cayanis? Cayanis. Go with Cayanis. Yeah, Cayanis. Yeah. Uh, and this was written by Michael Kennedy and Christopher Landon. Uh, and it was directed by Christopher Landon, who also uh, wrote and directed Happy Death Day, Happy Death Day to You. Uh, he also wrote Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse and Disturbia with Shia LaBeouf. Yeah. So he's very wor- uh, well versed in like this kind of thriller, comedy. Uh, blend of things. Yeah. Uh, but another cool thing about Freaky, right, as I'm sure most of you know, um, uh, God, what is her name? Laurie Strode, played by... Oh. Jamie Lee Curtis! <laughs> Jamie Lee Curtis! Okay, so there's some homages to the career of Jamie Lee Curtis in that. So, for instance, Freaky, oh. right? Freaky Friday was a film she starred in with, uh, for Disney with Lindsay Lohan when a daughter and mother uh, switched bodies, Yep. right? Uh, now, Freaky is clearly a play on that. Now, also, the character Booker Strode, right, played by Uriah Shelton. Uh, Strode is the last name of arguably one of her best roles ever, Lori Strode from the Halloween films. So you can see that Michael Land- uh, Christopher Landon sorry, and Mr. Kennedy here were uh, really paying homage to... Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis in some of her filmography. I always thought that Jamie Lee Curtis was a guy, not 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 like physically, but Just whenever I heard that name, I'm like, that's a man. That's a man. That's a man. I think it's the Lee Curtis part. Those are both very manly names. Oh my god! I mean, Jamie Fox, Jamie Kennedy. Whenever I hear Jamie Lannister, Jamie Lan- Yeah, you, you don't. Know? You know, it's not like uh, one of those typical. It's not super feminine. Like no. it's feminine, but it's not super feminine. Right. But um, all right. So, anyways. So that's who we got, where you might have seen them from, some fun tidbits on uh, yeah. homages. Um, as far as plot goes, this isn't like a horrifying movie. Um, it kind of plays up a lot of very stereotypical um, horror movie tropes, but it also has kind of like a bit of a twist on it. Mm. And that twist is uh, that our main characters switch bodies. Um, but we'll work our way up to that. So our initial main character is um, Millie. Uh, she's a, well, average height blonde girl, um, whose father died, 
uh, and she has become very introverted as uh, as such, and she kind of like takes care of her mom, and uh, she doesn't really go out much, and she's kind of picked on and bullied in school. She has some close friends, but not not many. Uh, and she has a crush on this boy who she sits next to in science class, uh, and that's Millie. That's like her whole character. She's also the school mascot. Um, and people have found a way to be mean about that, too, which I don't get, because I feel like you're not supposed to be mean to the mascot. Of your own team? Yeah, like, when yeah. I was at college, everyone was like, yo, the mascots, what's up? You know, get it, Arnie! Um, and I don't know, like, Agwam has Native Americans, like... <coughs> Bless you. Bless you. I, did, I, did you guys have a mascot? I don't think so. No. Yeah, I don't remember seeing a mascot. I never saw a mascot. Anyways, that's, that's aside from the point. Our other main character, Vince Vaughn. He is... The Butcher, uh, who is um, a murderer. Uh, <laughs> who is a murderer? <laughs> so, you don't get your beef steaks from him. No siree, Barbara. Exactly. So like 20 years ago, he murdered some, some high school kids, and then he just disappeared. Nobody knows where he went. Uh, it turns out he was hanging out in a crack den with homeless people, um, and uh, he, he's just kind of been laying low for the last 20 years. But recently, he decided, hey... I'm going to go murder some, some rich teenagers and steal a fancy knife that has some Aztec writing on it. Uh, and I don't know if he actually knew what the knife did, but uh, eventually, after one of these, uh, after one of the, um, the football games where Millie was cheering, you know, as the, as the mascot, uh, she comes into contact with this butcher and she gets shivved. Uh, and what happens is the Freaky Friday effect. The Freaky Friday effect is when you do the body switcheroo. So what happens, that, that, that just happens whenever you get shivved with the knife. And then afterwards, we find out later on that you have 24 hours to, to stab the person who stabbed you, or your old body if you're the stabber, um, to, to get your body back, right? To, to revert the switch. Um, so our movie pretty much follows Vince Vaughn as Millie trying to go and get her body back from Vince Vaughn, who is now, what well, not from Vince Vaughn, from... From the killer who's What's in Millie's body. What's his name, though? From the butcher, yeah. From the butcher who's in Millie's body, like you just said. Um, also, while this is happening, the butcher's going around in Millie's body, just, like, murdering people. She does only, however, murder the a-holes in the school, so she's kind of doing a service rather than just, like, being a terrible person. Uh, but you'll have to wait to see who she murders. You know, you, you'll, you enjoy that role. That totally, like, flips that around, though, right? From, yeah. like, a murder-killing spree to, like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> you are taking out all the people who bully Millie, like, traditional Millie. Yeah. And, and bring her down. So... The question then becomes, is she a bad guy? Yeah. Or is she really the hero or, like, Millie's unconscious rage coming through? Yeah, um, so she's definitely the bad guy. But <laughs> I 100% agree. Because um, in a way, it's empowering. Yeah, yeah. Um, not like, just the them being murdered, but now Millie's in, like, this, like, 40, 50-year-old, 6-foot-4 body mm. of a man. Um, you know, she's a small girl who's been pushed around a lot her whole life. So, I mean, they even say it in the film that, you know, that experience has been very empowering for her. Um, but anyways, on this journey to get Millie's body back, she recruits her friends, she convinces this boy that she liked, uh, to help them as well. Um, so that's, that's really what our movie follows. She's trying to get her body back before... 24 hours goes by, uh, and that, that's pretty much the plot. The only part that's like a big glaring plot hole that I never understood is why does the Spanish teacher know how to read like Aztec or like Mayan writing? Because they very overtly hint that the, that the knife has like Aztec uh, ancestry because she, uh, she, when, when they go to stab Millie the first time, uh, it, like, pans out. Now, all of a sudden, they're on top of this, this, um, this Azteque pyramid, uh, rather than in the middle of a football field. So, you know, she's a Spanish teacher that has nothing, I mean, like, 
the Aztecs were in Mexico, right? Or the Maya were in Mexico. Um, but there's aside, aside from that, there's no connection. Like, if I know Spanish, that has nothing to do with knowing how to read hieroglyphics of any, you know, culture, let alone, you know, Mayan or Aztec. Maybe um, she dabbles in it on the side, like Indiana Jones. She teaches Spanish by day, worldly uh, conquistador explorer by night. Well, the conquistador, hopefully she's not a conquistador. Okay, not a conquistador, but you understand yeah. what a treasure hunter... Uh, yeah. historian yeah. by night. You know, maybe that. But I see what you're saying. It seems kind of ham-fisted, like, oh, this random person in the school suddenly reads, like, ancient Aztec or Mayan hieroglyphics yeah. and can somehow decipher the meaning of the knife and set our characters on their journey without asking any questions as to, A, why do you have said knife? Yeah, you know, yeah in, a school. in a school. In a school, which is clearly not protocol in, in at any time period, but definitely not now. Yeah, where you cannot accidentally have a knife in in your bag because that's the big no no. Um, so yeah, no, I, I see your point. Um, I guess for me, uh, Vince Vaughn, who you know is imposing at being like six four, right? Like he does, and we've seen him play like a gangster, a cop, a literal like Nazi yeah. brawler, right? So he's played darker roles before, right? But I guess they. When you see Vince Vaughn in this, it's not like, oh, wow, that's scary. Like, even when he murders people, you're just kind of happy he's there. Like, yeah. oh, what? He showed up? Like, like that's awesome. Like, the funny guy's here. Exactly. Yeah. You know, because he's just charming and so quick-witted. And you, it, he seems like he'd be really cool to hang with. So, like, you're not really afraid of him when he's there. And don't get me wrong, this movie has a couple, like, a couple scares in it, right? Uh, they're not a lot, you know. I've watched yeah, this movie horrifying. twice, and both times it's not overly horrifying. Um... But, like, it, it's good. But anyway, what I'm getting at is, I think, in terms of acting, it was nice seeing... Maybe it's not even acting. I just thought it was nice seeing Vince Vaughn do more things. Yeah, you know? he has to assume two different roles in this. So, like, on the one hand, he's this crazy sociopath or psychopathic murderer where he, you know, has, like, one goal, and it's to murder teenagers. Um, and then on the other hand, he has to play a 16-year-old girl or an 18-year-old girl. girl. Um, I think that the only part about the 18-year-old girl thing is that, like, he kind of goes in for, like, the stereotypical, like, you know, I run kind of frilly and, like, tee-hee-hee, -hee -hee. you know? Like, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He, he doesn't, for somebody who's had so many years as an actor, he doesn't go for, like, any real, um, depth. With, I got you. With, with that whole like female aspect that he is playing, right. there there are some pretty cool, funny scenes with him. Like there's a, a scene that I know you thought was funny, where they had a that this boy that Millie liked. Yes, man. And he's confessing his love for Millie, but uh, Millie and Vince Vaughn's body. It was great. Yeah, it was great. That was great. Or the scene where like they they're like uh, they have a Vince Vaughn Millie, and then like. The killer Millie in the same room, and they're competing like to talk to the boy. Oh like, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That was the, there are a lot of voices going on right now. But Booker, I need you to look at me, right? They're like, did you like it? Don't tell me if you like it. That's, like like that. Like I thought he did that really, uh, really well, right? It was very endearing. It was very humorous, right? And you and you believed him, right? Because there was some there was emotion there, and like he just did a good job. Uh, yeah. But part of that uh, again, comedy is his background. So, like, it's easy to... I feel like it's easy for him to turn the charm on. Yeah. You know? Um, like, even if you're, you're, like... No matter what he's in, I feel like it's easy for him to be charming. Outside of Vince Vaughn, though, uh, the the lady who played Millie did... Catherine did, Newton? Catherine Newton did a good job also switching in between characters. Mm. I think that uh, where she starts off as Millie and then when she ends the film as Millie, there's some actual character development there, yeah. which is really cool. Obviously, when she is uh, the butcher, right, it's kind of a very one-track mind character. Like, her goal is to, to murder teenagers, uh, and she does that. Uh, but there, there, there isn't, like, any depth there, but that's kind of to be expected, right? Like, you don't go to, like, Friday the 13th and be like, oh, why doesn't Jason have more depth to him? You know, like... <laughs> He could have killed that, that, you know, those guys in a different way. Like, it, that's that's not the point. Um, 
So yeah, so I think that she did a good job transitioning in between these two roles, even though one of them was pretty basic. Um, and I think that she brought some believable development to a character. Well, her character, her role. Um, they yeah. kind of go into, again, like that whole outside the party thing, right? You know, outside of life, per se. Kind of like when we talked about Barbara Minerva mm -hmm. in Wonder Woman 84, she plays like that kind of thing. And she does, I agree, I agree. Um, I think the cast, like, of her friends, um, while they had, like, some pretty, you know, humorous and fun moments, I think they're definitely, if you separate them, they're not as interesting. No, they aren't. They're not, you know, and they're just various uh, film tropes and, and maybe specifically horror movie tropes, like the guy even says in uh, the trailer, I'm you're black and I'm gay, we're going to die. Yeah. So it's like, you're just, you know... I I don't they're not doing the characters justice. It's just like, hey, you're here to play this character and that's it. Yeah. So they're they're kind yeah. of just like plot pushing tools. Yeah. Um, exactly. Like her best friend uh doesn't do a whole heck of a lot besides one time where she goes in to get keys from her sister or to go in to get the knife from right, her right. sister who's a cop who has it in lockup. Um, the same so, could be said for his friend, right? That whole scene where Killer Millie's tied up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the other thing that they do with her friend that I think personally is a mistake, um, her, her male friend is uh, gay, and they're very over-the-top, flamboyant, like super in-your-face. And I'm not saying that there's nobody out there who's like that. Um, but he, he wasn't like playing a character who was also gay. He was playing... Uh, a character who was only gay, like that was his that was his whole thing, you know. Like he wasn't. I'm, I'm not saying that he has to be super developed, but whenever he talks, he doesn't just have to remind you, like like verbally remind you that he's gay. Like there's um, one of the interactions that I remember him with is he sees a wiener dog and he tells somebody that he loves their big wiener. Uh, there's another instance where he like uh, sees. Um, where where they're talking about like uh, gay dating apps and about how the gay dating scene's very limited in their town. Like all of his social interactions have something to do with his sexuality, which I think is um, kind of a, a flaw that a lot of films fall into. Um, but yeah, aside from that, he's really just there to push along the plot. Like he watches bad guy Millie while good guy Millie is going to go and do something over there that they need bad guy Millie not to be around for. You know, like, that's that's his whole that's his whole job in the whole movie. That, and he drives cars. Yep. Yeah, that's really it. That's really it. And I guess it's not really fair, right? You're perpetuating this uh, stereotype, right? This trope without really, like... All right, hey, hey, man, here's here's what you're going to do. It's like, no, this is it. This is all you're going to do. Yeah. You know, so I guess, yeah, that's not cool. That's bad writing. Um, so, again, uh, when, as I said, characters, when they're around Millie, uh, I think that's when they're at their, their peak. Yeah. When, when they're separate, I don't really find them as interesting or really as necessary. Yeah, they could not be there and you wouldn't really notice. Exactly, right? It really, and some of it's just for a comedy, poorly, poorly written uh, comedy in most cases. Um, but freaky overall, you know, you want to see like some comedy with some light shiving, then yep. this might be the flick for you. Um, you know, you want to see Vince Vaughn act like an 18-year-old girl, also done very convincingly, but this also could be for you. Yeah, if you want to watch Vince, if you kind of want to want to feel like you want Vince Vaughn to kiss another man on camera, watch this film. Uh, it's, it's a pretty good time. Um, and this has been The Welch Review. We'll see you next time.